In this video, I'm going to show you how we get over 1.4 million Spotify streams in the first four months of this song existing using Facebook ads. So let's just dive right in and take a look at the stats. So this is the Spotify for Artists data. And if the song looks familiar at all, the, the album art and the song name, that's because I talked about this in a previous video, which you can check out here after finishing this video. But I am going to be referencing some stuff in that. So the song came out February 10th. Right now it's, it's May 31st. I don't know when this video will go live. But this is, it's been 14 weeks or so, so less than four months. And we're going to go through a lot of these numbers in detail, including where these streams are coming from. Now, on the, we used Hyped It for this landing page. And so I'm going to comb through some of these metrics. We had 60,000 conversions, <laughs> which is just insane. If you don't know what a conversion is, essentially you, you send people to a landing page and then click to go to Spotify or whatever platform. But in this case, I think we only had Spotify on the landing page because we wanted to send 100% of the traffic to Spotify. So what I want to cover, if we go back and we look at the, the audience level, this artist only has one song. So this is their very first song, which is also kind of crazy. So that means we can use their audience engagement stats or their whole profile to look at all the data for this song. If there's multiple songs, we couldn't do that, but since there's only one song, we can. If I go over here, there's a couple cool things we can do. If I look at a custom time period and I go to, I'll just do from February all the way to today, or till the 30th, which was yesterday, I can go to the source of streams thing, and we're gonna click on artist profile and catalog. What we're gonna see here is there was 31,000 streams directly from artist profile and catalog. So if you're not familiar with Spotify and how they track certain things, when you when you send someone directly from a link to your song, it's generally going to be artist profile and catalog. And you can see here roughly, uh, this is listeners, by the way, so 31,000 uh, listeners. If we go to streams, 86,000. So our 60,000 uh, conversions got us roughly 86,000 direct streams immediately from the ad. A lot of people say in comments of, of my videos, oh, you're getting this amount of streams, how is this worth it? And and I say this a lot, but it's it's not necessarily just the first listen that matters. In fact, the, the first listen, as you can see, like out of 1.4 million streams, only 86,000 were directly from that first ad impression, the first ad conversion. But then we have listeners own playlist and library. And this is recurring listeners. So this is still caused from these purple people here, these artist profile and catalog people. It's still directly caused from that, but these are the people who are saving the song, adding it to their playlist and whatever, so they can come back to the song later. And you'll notice that the artist profile and catalog stays, it's pretty much directly proportional to your ad budget, but the artist, the listener's own playlist and library is not directly proportional to that because this will keep going for years after your campaign is over. And that's why I always say the vast majority of the streams you get from an ad campaign happen after the campaign is over. So this 1.4 million stream song, if we killed all the ads right now, fast forward a year or two, I would be willing to bet that this song has at least 3 million streams, probably more like 4 or 5 million on Spotify alone. So artist profile and catalog, 425,000. So for some of you who, who are, have never like realized this, of how many, how many streams are happening like as secondary listens from the song, um, you can see it's dramatically higher than the actual initial artist profile and catalog streams. So that's one thing. But if I go back up here, and I might have to start turning stuff off, otherwise it's getting kind of messy. Um, there is listener's queue, which is somehow related, but it's a lot smaller. So that could be either or of these categories. Um, if I turn that off, though, and add algorithmic, and I will turn off uh, listener's own playlist and library. No, I'll leave it there just for comparison. I'll turn off artist profile and catalog. So this is algorithmic, specifically Discover Weekly, Your Daily Mix, Release Radar. That falls under algorithmic playlists and mixes. And so that gave us 304,000 streams, which is almost comparable to this, to this recurring listener's stat. Now, if we add in radio and autoplay, and I'm gonna turn off some stuff here. We can see algorithmic compared to radio and autoplay. And the reason why I'm doing this is because like these two categories alone are 650,000 streams. So again, vast majority of the streams you get in a song don't happen uh, from your, like directly from your ad campaign. They're caused from your ad campaign, but they're not directly correlated. Uh, now, before we continue, I wanna point out that if you wanna do this stuff yourself, 
and run ads yourself. I do have a course called Spotify Growth Machine that you can check out in the description and I'll put a little thing right here. But if the Facebook ads thing is just not your real house and you don't want to deal with it, I do have an ad agency called For Forbid Media and that's what this campaign was run through. So we ran this campaign. I'm not guaranteeing we'll be able to pull this off for every single song because this song did exceptional in, in so many ways, but we did run this as part of our ad agency. So click the link in the description to check that out. But yeah, let's look at some more stats because there's a lot of interesting things that we can learn from this. Now, this artist did have a really big budget and I want to be clear on that. I, I will, I'll cover a little bit about the Facebook ad campaign in the previous video I did, so you can check out more about that. But this artist spent 12,000 Canadian dollars on this. If we convert that to US dollars, that's about $8,800. So big budget, right? This didn't happen overnight. Again, this is over the course of four months. It's still a big budget for, for anyone involved, but that is important to note. Now, the thing is, if we were to do the math on, let's say the song got 5 million streams, it would actually make 17 grand. So it actually would profit. And as I said before, I, I could totally imagine this hitting 5 million streams. Even if it only hit three though, it's gonna pay for itself back. So this is a, like a picture perfect example of a song that actually profits in, in the short, well, not super short term, but like in a year, which is great. And like everything after that is just gonna be pure your profit so you know not a lot of songs will lose money but this is an example and i've shown others in the past so i guess i'll link to a video here showing other campaigns that can actually turn a profit when when things go according to plan so looking at the source of streams again uh, the other thing we can look at is well one thing i want to do i want to turn on all of these different services individually the reason is we can look at all of them as a breakdown because there's another strategy that we did for this artist that isn't something that I would normally do and i think it's really interesting so artist profile and catalog 86 listeners own playlist and library 425 so these two are about a half a million streams about a third of the streams like are directly from people who saw the ad or save the song and listen to the song later again and again listeners queue is also part of that so you know about about a half a million streams from that now i don't know why there's seven and just 21 editorial streams that's strange <laughs> it's like practically nothing so practically zero editorial coverage at all uh, algorithmic was about 300 radio is 300 so 650 you're from like both algorithmic radio is basically algorithmic um and so that's another third roughly um I'm, you know if we assume it's roughly 1.5 million and then it's like half a million half a million so we got like two thirds covered for but what is this last little third and actually i'm looking at i am looking at streams now so this last little third is actually third-party playlisting and I wanna show you an interesting strategy that we did that and I mentioned a couple times that there are places where third-party playlisting makes sense, but usually in the grand scheme of an overall bigger budget and not necessarily from release date. So I wanna show you something very specific that I have to kind of tune these settings here for. This should make it clear. All right. So I have al algorithmic and other listeners playlists. And I'll add on artist profile and catalog just for comparison. So you can see here at the very beginning, it's it's 100% artist profile and catalog, right? If I turn off artist profile and look at listeners own, it's just our ads running until you see here, we get this first little bit of an algorithmic spike. It's not a ton. It's like a thousand streams a day though. So it is, or I guess 1500 a day. So it is actually fairly substantial. At that point, the next day, you see this little green bump up? That is when we added the third party playlisting to this song. And you'll notice that along the journey of this song, so this dark green right here is third party playlisting, the pink is the algorithmic and the light green is the artist profile and catalog streams. We timed the third party playlisting with the general overall stream count, but also with the algorithmic. So we didn't do any playlisting until the song got on algorithmic playlists. Because at that point, we know Spotify understands the audience. They know exactly who the song's for and who it isn't because they're pushing it, they're recommending it. So we, we feel safer to add on that third-party playlist thing at that time to give the song a little boost, not like a ton, but like a 10 to 20% boost at most. In fact, a lot of it, it was 10. In the last 28 days, it's been about 15 to 20. But for most of the journey, it was it was around 10% of the streams are from third-party playlisting and the rest was from everything else. So very small percentage. So as the algorithmic spikes are getting even bigger where i mean also the recurring listeners and radio and stuff is starting to kick on is the songs getting bigger and bigger and bigger then we're just adding on a little bit more playlisting as as it goes just kind of in stages 
Um, so the overall cost of this campaign was actually bigger than the than the eight thousand dollar budget I showed. Um, I don't remember what the total was, but it's not like double that budget or anything. So it's smaller than the ad campaign. So even accounting for that, it's still less. But even if we didn't do that, I feel pretty confident that this campaign would have done pretty great without it. Because one kind of crazy stat about it that I don't know if I've ever had a song pop off quite this big on algorithmic playlist, specifically Discover Weekly. Um, but really everything. Um, it's got 22,000... Oh, that's listeners. I've got 26,000 streams on that day and 27,000 on this day. So 27,000 streams a day, which is just like ludicrous. All right, so flipping into the playlist area here, we can see where exactly all these streams came from. So we know that about a third of the streams came directly from, from listeners uh, on Artist Profile and Catalog or listeners own playlist and library. Roughly another third came from Algorithmic and another third came from um, everything else, but a, a probably less than a third, maybe 20 a quarter came from this third party playlist thing or less actually. All right, so now let's take a look at these playlists. So we recall about a third came from Algorithmic playlisting as a whole uh, and, and radio as well. So let's look at the breakdown of that. And I was kind of surprised here that radio was so substantial. Radio can be pretty good, but in this case, it actually kind of crushed Discover Weekly. 350,000 streams from radio and 250,000 streams from Discover Weekly. Uh, typically, I consider long-term Discover Weekly to be a bigger playlist, but over the past like year, I've noticed radio get bigger and bigger, and I don't know if this correlates to Discover Mode first, first on, on Spotify. And if you don't know anything about that, I do a video right here that you can check out if I have any more little links I can add. Um, I don't know if this artist is actually using discovery mode. We don't have enough access to the um, artist backend to know if they are or not. It does look on the stats that they may be, but obviously they couldn't do it in the first month because you, you can't use discovery mode for the first month of a release. Now, those are the main algorithmics. There is also your daily mix at 25K, on repeat at 4.5K, and release radar at 500, so practically nothing. Um, but looking at... The other ones, we can see exactly which playlists were were used. And you might recognize one of these, this Electronica Vija Exitos, is when I did my recent Indie Music Academy review. And again, I'll link to it here if I have any more links I can do. Uh, this was one of those playlists. And the reason is, it, it wasn't that we actually used Indie Music Academy, is that a lot of curators will do playlisting work for multiple outlets. So that's that's one thing to consider. So, yeah, that's the biggest playlist, though, 134 and then 50. And you can see the breakdown of this across everything. But the radio and Discover Weekly stats are what I was most interested in. Now, the location stats are also interesting because this campaign, while it did incredibly well at 22 cents, again, Canadian per conversion, which is like 16, 17, 18 cents U.S. conversion, this is only tier one country. So on the hyped it stats, if we look at the countries... Um, U.S. was the number one country at 14,000 conversions. Germany, 7,000. Canada, 5,500. Spain, 5,600. France, 4,000. So now I want to show you a little bit about the locations because this is an interesting fact. Even though that our campaign did about 22 cents a conversion, again, Canadian, so this is like, I don't know, 18 cents USD or something. Um, if we go over to Hyped It, we can see that we actually only use tier one countries. So U.S., 15K, Germany, 7K, Canada, 5K, Spain, 5.6K. And these are all conversions which generally mean multiple streams per, per person because the conversion is generally closer to a listener than it is a stream. And the, the same thing is reflected over on the Spotify for Artists that Germany has 94K, US 79K, France, etc. So it lines up pretty well with that. Obviously, the algorithmic and the radio stuff is going to do whatever it's going to do. Uh, a lot of times when I run campaigns for my own music, I'll include Tier 2, which is has a lot of Mexico and Brazil because they're so much cheaper to advertise to. When I get the algorithmic pushes and radio pushes from Spotify, a lot of those streams end up being from the U.S. And that's why for my music, um, even though I've spent the vast majority of my cash in advertising for Spotify in Brazil and Mexico, that's why the U.S. is my number one country. Because those algorithmic and radio playlists, for, for whatever reason, tend to not be dependent on where you actually got the listeners in the first place. So if, if you want to learn more about you know, either how you can do this yourself or you can just hire my ad agency to do it for you, I do have links in the description, but I'll also put some, some links over here 
uh, where you can check that stuff out as well. And if you want to learn even more about how to do this completely for free, I have a ton more videos about how to run Facebook ad campaigns exactly like this on my channel. So subscribe if you want more. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.